Mr. Hello. Peter Graham, hello. Thank you for joining us, Mr. Peter Graham from the Global Building Performance Network and uh, I'm Irma Hutabara. Nice to meet you. Nice meeting you too. Um, I would like to start with asking you a question about the uh, cooperation with Maske. I know you've been doing a lot of uh, uh, cooperation and can you tell us what is it that you're going to develop uh, in Indonesia with that cooperation? With Maske? Sure. Yeah, sure. Well, um, the GBPN has been engaging uh, in Indonesia to help develop energy performance standards for principally for residential buildings and for housing market. Mm -hmm. And Maske has been a, been a wonderful partner because the, uh, the approach that we're taking in Indonesia is to develop a, a local consortia called a HIDL. And uh, the idea is that um, guided by Indonesian expertise, we can develop up these policy plans for low carbon housing. And to do it in a way which is engaging with the, the strong expert base in Indonesia uh, and to respond to the local needs. So with Maske's help, we've been able to develop this um, policy plan as part of it in the area agency as part of this HIDOP group. Mm -hmm. And, and um, now we're moving into some really exciting pilot uh, programs in, in cities like Samarinda where the, the policy plan is now being mm -hmm. developed and adapted to help support the municipal government there to create um, standards for, for energy performance and green buildings in that city. Um, yeah, so Maske uh, and GBPN have also been discussing uh, strategies for supporting national policy reforms as well around energy efficiency in the building sector. Yes, so um, <clears throat> there is optimism in, in, in this uh, cooperation and have you seen any obstacles in, in, in uh, uh, doing so in the field of the uh, residential building powered this energy efficiency in terms of uh, regulation or, or um, what you uh, face in the field, Mr. Graham? Yeah, well, like many countries, uh, one of the, the big issues that uh, we find in Indonesia is that um, the, the residential building sector is very diverse and um, is there's a, there's a lot of different building types and a lot of different types of building ownership. Uh, there are a lot of different government jurisdictions which have got uh, some, some power or some influence over the way buildings are designed and built and operated. And so with that diversity and the fragmentation comes a challenge uh, in, first of all, finding out, uh, well, finding the data that's required to support policy development. So understanding what the residential building stock is like, you know, how different, um, different communities use energy, different building types use energy, and being able to understand uh, in aggregate what are the opportunities for policy intervention and how then to regulate a, a very diverse industry. So these are common challenges. I wouldn't say they're unique to Indonesia at all, but um, certainly Indonesia has some unique features as well being such a, a diverse country in its own right and so spread out uh, with um with different um you know types of different different levels of city development different um different uh, stages of development as well so i guess what we're looking at is is what we call a kind of bottom-up approach where we understand uh, through empowering local experts what the needs of a specific location in Indonesia are. And then by working with the local uh, stakeholders, being able to feed up to the national level uh, the lessons that we're learning about how to better regulate energy use in, in residential buildings. So yeah, the challenges are common, but um, I think this addressing these with a, with a bottom-up approach is the right way to go. Yes, the bottom-up approach, it, um, 
I totally agree. I just interviewed uh, the uh, <clears throat> officer, functional officer for building and housing uh, from the public works. Um, he was telling me that Indonesia has 509 regulation in, in building. And now the government has the new uh, presidential decree number 16, the 2021, that will become one information system management in uh, buildings. And that would, uh, <clears throat> that would be the, the substitute of the 509 regulation. It become uh, one source with, with one regulation that will be enacted in, in July. So um, this will be uh, a better picture in the future. How do you see the regulation so far, uh, Mr. Graham? Yeah, this is um, an important move, I think, in Indonesia to have this omnibus law and some the omnibus right. approach. Right, omnibus law. Yeah, and um, so definitely I think there's some advantages um, when we look at, at best practices around the world in developing building performance regulations, uh, we see that perhaps taking the, the, um, the next step in standardizing building performance nationally, it requires that sort of omnibus approach where you can have, you could set common standards, common minimum standards uh, in something like a national, a national construction code or a national policy. Uh, and then have a governance framework which enables the regional governments to adapt uh, and local governments to implement. Uh, so, yeah, I think part of the, the question is going to be how, on the one hand, it, it, it probably will simplify the regulatory reform process in terms of uh, engaging with the right kinds of um, government agencies to develop the common standards. Uh, and then the question is, how do you create the architecture to adapt those building codes and standards at the, the regional and then at the local level? Mm -hmm. uh, so, but again, most uh, or many countries that have, have moved to a more uh, comprehensive framework for building regulations do have this more of an omnibus approach where there is uh, a, a common national standard which mm -hmm. then is able to be adapted and then implemented at the local level. So hopefully that is going to be something which is going to work well for Indonesia. Um, and I think part of the, the other opportunity here is that there are, there are some provinces uh, and cities that have been very ambitious with setting green building standards. And there's a lot of lessons learned, a lot of, a lot of insight in those jurisdictions that can be brought up perhaps more efficiently to inform uh, the development and, um, and the extension of national policies in this area. Yeah, so um, that is the standard approach that will be hopefully going toward a better uh, uh, regulation with the reform of the omnibus law. No, and uh, the last one is, um, what is what is it in your opinion that <clears throat> would be the uh, uh, the highlight? If you want to make it successful, what is it that need to be uh, addressed and to uh, be paid uh, full attention in the uh, uh, toward this net zero building for Indonesia? Well, I think that for, from my point of view, looking at the business as usual trajectory for growth in energy demand in Indonesian buildings, it's clear that uh, unless there is some um, quick attention paid to regulating residential energy use and particularly trying to stem the growth of cooling related energy demand, mm -hmm. uh, there'll be what we call a lock-in risk in Indonesia, and that is that there'd be a large number of inefficient buildings constructed, uh, which are obviously more expensive to retrofit, um, but also may undermine the country's ability to meet its climate 
mm. commitments uh, because you know the building sector contrib contributes a lot of greenhouse gas energy related greenhouse gas emissions in every country and mm -hmm. so avoiding that lock in is important so i suppose in terms of success uh, we, it would be good to see um, a quick and effective move to setting up a trajectory for achieving zero emissions uh, residential buildings in indonesia by a certain date that would enable the country to meet its zero emissions target by 2050 uh, and then with with that kind of a, in a sectorial target set, it really does then enable a whole range of strategic um, planning to take place in, in setting milestones for uh, extension and review and updating of building codes to see that progressive improvement in, in minimum performances to achieve the zero emissions goal overall. So I think that to me is, is it's, 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 a definition of success, but I think it's also um, an imperative because of the the impact, the potential impact of the growth in energy demand in the residential sector uh, can have on climate change. And I suppose the other aspect of all of this, which is very important for us to understand, is that uh, when we're talking about perform building performance, we're also talking about fundamental qualities like thermal comfort, indoor environmental quality. We're talking about people's health and well-being and productivity. Mm -hmm. And so uh, work that we've done in the past, looking at, at the return on investment from a government point of view of instituting ambitious building regulations shows that uh, the, the more ambitious they are, the greater the return on investment over the long term. So. I suppose um, having the confidence to draw on international best practices and, and Indonesian best practices um, to mm. set those ambitious targets is, is important. Yes, and um, thank you so much. But there is another one that we need your uh, opinion uh, about, are you aware about the PP number 70? Yes, in, in general, yes. Yes, yes, what do you think about it? Well, I think it's great to see um, that uh, more of the, the um, floor area is being covered by the, the, the regulation. Mm -hmm. But um, the question is, how far will it go with uh, covering the residential sector? And I think this is a, this is a, a question I know we've been discussing with Muske about mm -hmm how to, what's the best way of informing that, that um, the review and um, an updating of that regulation and how, to, how can we best provide the evidence and that sort of support for the evidence-based approach to enable the residential buildings to be fully uh, covered by that regulation. So I think that's, uh, it's, 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 that's for me an important, um, an important question to be collaborating with Muskay on for sure. Yes, of course. So from the GBPN, how far will it go with the residential sector, right? And I agree that uh, review and updating regulation is, is also important. And I think um, we have covered uh, most of the uh, problems and also um, Will you be participating in this event again next year? What do you think about this event? Oh, I think it's been fascinating. I really enjoyed the panel that I was on yesterday. I felt really honored to be in, um, able to be involved in a panel where we were being briefed by, mm -hmm. by um, the DG for, uh, for housing and, and really get some insight into the um, commitments that were being made at the national level and also you know within within um, the green buildings area you know to hear about 100 percent green building target by 2035 and to hear about uh, the measures being taken to achieve the zero emissions by 2050 was really inspiring mm -hmm. uh, and also I, I think having that it's it's an interesting conference because you have got um it's, it's, it's unique to have that access to new information and to have such a candid discussion 
with policymakers about you know what are what are the what are the barriers and opportunities in this space. So yes, I, I definitely would love to be back. Thank you so much, Mr. Peter Graham, and I hope to see you again. And uh, thank you for being here with us in the Green Corner. It's and my good, pleasure. Have a great day. Thank okay, you. Okay, you too. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you.